Hello, everyone. I'm Joel Guzman, Director of Membership and Operations at Mute Lab. Thank you for taking the time to join us today to learn about membership at Mute Lab and how we support companies that are working in clean energy. During this session, we'll take a deep dive into community at Mute Lab and the benefits and value of membership. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, Mute Lab is a community of experts and innovators applying transformative technology to solve the world's biggest challenges. Our membership and studios bring together entrepreneurs, engineers, inventors, and industry leaders to create sustainable solutions and enterprises. We employ technologies including robotics, AI, and material science to transform what matters most, health, environment, media, cities, and infrastructure. Let's start with having a closer look at our community. In four years, our community has grown to more than 160 companies and 800 members. During that time, over 1,700 companies have applied to be part of Mute Lab, and our acceptance rate is currently hovering around 10 to 15 percent. We've built a set of resources to support members in making products for manufacturing thanks to our product realization labs. Ensuring that our community has access to capital is also paramount which is why we work to maintain relationships with a diverse network of funders, VCs, family offices, corporate VCs, and helping to match companies with appropriate resources to capital. To date, membership community has raised over 700 million in funding. Our community is based out of two primary spaces here in Brooklyn, our headquarters in the Brooklyn AVR, where we are currently, and then 77 Washington, just an eight minute walk away, which is designed to be a landing pad for companies that may have outgrown this space and could benefit from access to larger private offices. More recently, we have expanded into Detroit, Michigan with the launch of two studio programs in partnerships with Ford and Michigan Central. A space for members in Detroit will follow as we look to be part of the tech community in Michigan in the long term. We are broadcasting today from our headquarters, a former shipbuilding factory within the Brooklyn Navy Yard. This 84,000 square feet space houses all of our prototyping facilities, a number of workspaces ranging from flex desks to full offices. And we also provide members with access to bookable conference rooms, an in-house cafe, on-site IT support, mail service, lockers, bike parking, and more. It's really an inspiring place to work from. At 77 Washington, again, it's located about 10 minute walk here from our headquarters. And there we offer 22,000 uh, um, of workspace across six stories, featuring full and half floors. And it's geared towards teams that are looking for full floor or a suite ba to base their team at. A little bit more about uh, membership. Our community has grown tremendously over the past four years. And this snapshot here tells the story of the New Lab member growth. In just four years, New Lab has grown from 23 startups with a total collective valuation of 175 million to more than 160 companies valued together at more than 2.8 billion. The community also grew from six, uh, 60 entrepreneurs and engineers and inventors to now a community of 800. At the same time, the aggregate value of our member company has risen significantly. The average company value grew from $7.6 million to $17.5 million today. It's quite impressive. We've also seen a range of acquisitions during this time period. And these stats are important because they indicate that the resources that we're bringing to members are truly helping them grow and scale effectively. Nidlap is a dynamic community and supportive as well, which is phenomenal and really what we set out to foster. For members, this means you can find experts in a range of topics and learn from those around you. People with masters and doctorates across a range of topics, experienced entrepreneurs with successful fundraising track records, and people who have built supply chains and figure out manufacturing. We really encourage peer-to-peer -peer mentorships and connections, and we provide the tools to facilitate this. What's been positive for New York in particular is that we've seen 38% of member companies relocate to NYC, which speaks to the role that we are playing and aspire to play in supporting an enduring local tech ecosystem that's part of the fa fabric of New York City. 
we encourage and are thrilled to see the level of collaboration across the community. One of these examples is Jump, which joined Mute Lab as social bicycles, building a smart lock dockless bike share system. And eventually they brought a pedal assisted e-bike to market as Jump before their acquisition by Uber. Working with fellow member Voltaic, Jump designed a custom solar panel to power the bike lock. This is indicative of how Voltaic supports the community, serving as in-house solar experts, helping teams access if and how to integrate solar into their connected systems and IoT points. Flip develops an adaptive system to convert traditional bikes into e-bikes and partner with NX Beta, a design and engineering firm who supports fellow members in design and manufacture of new products. Tarform, a team building an e-bike, is uh, e-motorcycle, is experimenting with additive and monitor uh, manufacturing to design their products and partner with Lens Clouds to create a 3D scan of their model. We facilitate these network connections across members in different ways. Through curated introductions, we connect you with the right investors, fellow entrepreneurs, or strategic partners. Member exclusive workshops feature advisors and subject expert matters. And with a range of focus from product roadmaps to growing a team to navigating IP, among other topics. We have a custom design application to support member experience from providing a member directory to booking conference rooms or prototyping consultations. NewtonLab is a supportive community and the NewtonLab team actively supports our members. Across our team of about 30 people, there are a lot of different backgrounds and we make ourselves available through office hours from marketing and pay PR with uh, Lynn, Satish providing technical and scientific background, or Sean, our CEO, uh, talking to teams about management and scaling their business operations. Boris is our in-house product realization lead, and Jared, who is our COO, helps our members with finance and business model generation, uh, as well as venture development. As a member, you will also have the opportunity to participate in our innovation studios through which we partner with Fortune 500 and civic leaders to solve the world's most pressing challenges. As a member of Mute Lab, you will have the first look at innovation studios when they launch and learn how to get involved. The framework for our studios are about aligning on the right problems to solve and places to apply specific emerging technologies. Our team conducts generative research to unpack these problems and match them with the right technical capabilities, sometimes from adjacent sectors as well. We invite teams typically from around the world and our membership to join these programs. For the corporate and government partners, the students provide a way to de-risk new concepts and partner with startups and founders uh, for potential growth terms in terms of partnerships and investments. A little bit about our resources here. Let's have a, a, a take a closer look here at our benefits that you will receive as a member. Um, the product realization and prototyping facilities at Mute Lab are core to our offering and share a set of resources for our members. Members have 24 hour access to each shop that contains state of the art equipment designed to facilitate product development workflow from idea to design to working prototype. We empower our community to work on a diverse array of projects simultaneously, helping you quickly go from hypotheses to implementation to testing and refinement. Our specialized staff fosters a learn as you go attitude, free consultation, modular curriculum and prototyping skills, as well as full service fabrication. You can see at a glance here the various product realization resources available to members, including AgTech Lab, Electronics Lab, CNC Milling, etc. We know access to capital is critical for our members, and we have a network of over 400 early stage investors, VC, and family offices. We work first to understand where you are at and what you are building and what type of investor makes sense for you. We also collaborate with organizations such as Google X and the New York Angels and Ali Corp to create opportunities for new lab members to demo their work and seek investment. With Google's uh, X Moonshot Factory, we host quarterly pitch sections to provide valuable opportunity for new lab members to receive feedback from the X team. Twice a year, we host the New York Angels, um, as well as with Alicorp, we have four 
a pitch days per year where June Lab members get to present their technology and business vision for feedback and potential investment. Our membership benefits package is valued at more than $100,000 and provides discounts and access to services that are relevant to your work and day-to-day -day operations, ranging from AWS to Brex to UPS. So at this point, we are hoping that you're considering joining the new love community. And we wanted to focus a little bit on um, all of the, uh, what we look at uh, specifically in terms of membership. So in terms of the application review, we first look at applications that we're really trying to understand who you are, the team you're building, the stage of your development, and dig deep on the technology. We want to understand the vision and viability of what you're building and make sure it's a match with the resources we can offer, make sure that we're not creating too much direct competition between companies. We also consider your point of view on potential impact of your technology as it scale. And finally, we look very closely at social responsibility. If there is a sense of social responsibility in what you're building, we're definitely interested. Let's take a moment to highlight three companies right now that are working on clean technology. BioLite is focusing on creating off-grid clean energy for emerging markets and outdoor recreational experiences. Voltaic, which is a solar company, specializes in design and development of small-scale um, solar systems. And there's Block Power, which is offering a smart heat pump system to multifamily businesses at no initial cost. And now I'm so pleased to introduce Pietro Filardo, the founder and CEO of Plyant Energy, which conceptualizes, patents, and develops highly novel technologies in the field of marine robotics, propulsion and energy generation and pumping. And Pietro, uh, welcome. Good afternoon, thank you. It's so great to have you with us today. Now, Pietro, you have been part of the New Lab community since I like to say before the beginning. <laughs> since we open our doors. And during that period, Plyant Energy has made significant strides. Right before uh, the, the webinar today, we were having a, a really great conversation about how you're thinking of the company now moving forward. But I'd love to hear more, how did you get started? And then what problem were you looking to solve? Yeah, so I have a sort of fairly unconventional background, which I find is often the case with people in startups. And especially in ULab, as people come from a, there's a lot of different histories behind the people that come here. I mean, in my case, uh, I had uh, studied marine biology, had a marine biology degree. Uh, then I uh, studied architecture and I had a career in architecture, but I, I had always been thinking about certain, while studying my marine biology career and spending a lot of time in and around water, I thought a lot about how to harness the power of water. So there were some ideas that had still been in my mind during my architectural studies and career that never went away. Uh, so I decided to um, I decided to put some more thought and file some patents. To my surprise, got the patents. Uh, applied to some funding for some federal agencies and my Serta here in New York. And to my surprise, got the funding. So found myself as a full time uh, entrepreneur slash engineer slash uh, technologist or whatever the case may be. We began with renewable energy, which is why we're called Client Energy Systems. We began solely. Uh, as a renewable energy company. Uh, and the, the essential concept, um, the founding sort of philosophy was uh, looking at uh, harnessing flows of streams and rivers without dams. So dams are very effective yeah. for hydropower, but they're, cost, they're, quite, they're expensive. There's a big carbon footprint for dams. Um, there's fewer and fewer places where dams can be installed. Um, and there's you know, fish migration, there's a variety of issues with them, even though hydropower is a very good source of clean energy overall for the world. Um, so how to, how to harness the flow of, of rivers? Uh, people trying to do it in the past, uh, and same thing with waves, by the way, with ocean power, uh, is that the mechanism works until it breaks. And in, in, a, in a dammed hydropower situation, you control the flow. You store the water and you let it flow exactly where you want it at the speed you want with nothing, you know, no logs or anything in it. With undammed hydro and with wave energy, you're at the mercy of nature to an extent that makes it very hard to develop a physical device that, um, that can survive the extreme events, such as a storm uh, or survive uh, you know, a tree trunk coming along. If you have a, a bladed system, 
you know, wind turbines, um, they do get hit by birds and I suppose they get hit by a plane, but a, a wind turbine is up there in the air free and clear, and unless there's a tornado is unlikely to be struck by any significant object. So in a river, it seems like a great place to put an underwater uh, turbine. And there are some great work being done by people that are still working on this and doing some great work, Verdant, Verdant Power being one of them, being pioneer. The challenge is that uh, everything works beautifully until you know, a log or something comes along and hits your, your mechanism. So to cut a long story short, the basic idea was rather than having objects that will be strong enough and beefy enough and resilient enough to withstand whatever nature throws at them, uh, to have a mechanism that doesn't, that yields rather than resists. So the idea is to have something flexible um, that will, you know, like a judo approach that will take the punches by, you know, absorb them and deflecting them rather than fighting back. Uh, and so that led to some of the early uh, implementations of the energy harnessing uh, prototypes that we've seen here. There's a the red fin uh, of uh, mechanism is a, is a energy um, harnessing electricity generator in that case. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and we were originally going to use a type of material called the dielectric elastomer. Uh, now it's a little more conventional. The mm -hmm. energy harnessing technology we developed that worked uh, turned out to be very useful uh, for propulsion, just as a, a wind turbine is sort of the inverse technology to a, a fan, fan consuming energy to, to create, uh, to move fluid air, a turbine harnessing moving, moving air to uh, generate electricity. So the energy harnessing fins that we developed are also very good at propulsion. So we ended up developing with support from the, from the US Navy, we ended up developing this robot prototype here called Velox. Um, and not only are the fins very good at creating thrust, they make very good thrusters, but the fins uh, also give the robot amphibious capabilities, which no other vehicle uh, of its kind has that we're aware of. And as you saw, ice skating ability. So it's a very versatile machine um, that we were, were about to start another round of funding with the, the Office of Naval Research to, um, to give them something that can look for unexploded on mines and ordnance in the, in the in sand in in sand beaches and where the where the waves meet the shore where you generally can't send a an underwater robot without it risking getting stranded. So what the green fin machine here is uh, this is actually a pump. So there's no electricity involved in here, and this one is being funded by uh, the Department of Energy. We're in a phase two SPIR right now, so it's much simpler than the robot, much simpler than the electricity generator. There's no electronics involved. You have a, a, a very direct one-to-one -one, um, transmission of power from the water, and the water makes the fins undulate. That's back to the robot here. And the fin undulation uh, basically squeezes something in the core of the object. So you've got fin undulation squeezing something that, squirt, that squeezes the water, and you get your water pressure. So that's like a, we want to make that as low cost as possible on the target market for the pump is the is in the developing world where there's a need for uh, small irrigation pumps that don't need any power as long as the water source is flowing um, and also for water filtration <clears throat> so we have these two branches there's the you know the military robots and then there's the uh, uh, pump uh, filtration or irrigation pump for developing parts of the world and we're, we're working on both Yes, so that is such a fantastic, uh, you know, story, uh, Pietro. So you start first as a marine biologist, and you you put it so compellingly, right? You understood as a marine biology what the power of the ocean was, and you wanted to develop a technology that that could leverage that um, for for products. And now you have um, this technology developed that has multiple applications. Uh, so you're seeing some applications of it for um, improving conditions in the development world, as well as advancing uh, some more government-led initiatives. Um, and in a recent conversation, you said also something that I found extremely compelling as we are thinking about our climate crisis ahead. And it is that the most important problems in energy will be addressed by innovation in hardware. And clearly, Plan Energy has had a focus there. Uh, again, developing a technology that has multiple applications. I'm curious to hear, why was NITLAB an attractive community then 
for you to join uh, this energy focused startup like Plant Energy? What do you find compelling about that? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. And there's really, I mean, there's nothing like New Lab, certainly not New York, but so, uh, anywhere else in the country that I know of. Um, obviously, especially being in the city, hardware uh, requires space and it requires equipment. If anybody can start a software company at home, with, all you need is a keyboard and a computer. If you want to do hardware, hardware uh, R&D, you have to have enough space to put equipment. You have to be able to buy the equipment or rent it. Uh, and that's just very difficult uh, for a startup to do, especially starting from scratch. If you already have some funding, maybe you can, mm -hmm. you can rent some space in a, in a warehouse in you know, Brooklyn or outside of the city. Um, but to just get going, at least, um, if you need a five axis lay uh, a mill, um, then you're never going to be able to see what that could be in a way that you can with software. Um, and, you know, regarding hardware being the answer to the renewable energy challenges that we have, the energy mm -hmm. challenges, certainly, I think it, 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 it's energy is the physical world, right? It's not a digital thing. It's not information. Energy is a very raw thing. And it requires materials or it requires motion. It's a physical thing, electricity. Um, and there's a very big physical component to uh, to the renewable energy research that's going on. I mean, software, of course, has a huge role to play, uh, especially in developing the tools that will enable people to develop the hardware. But you know, mm -hmm. my sense is there, are, there is tremendous, there is a, there's a long way, there's a lot of hardware um, innovation left in the, in the energy generating business uh, field. Um, and, it's, and we don't see much of it because it's very hard to do it unless you're part of a government lab or you're part of a, a university lab. Um, and so new lab basically makes that possible because and it's not just the, it's not just all the equipment that you, you did a quick overview of um, that's available. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, it's the, um, uh, it's having other hardware focused people that just happen to know about some new adhesive that comes out that will withstand temperatures that you didn't think were possible for adhesive. If you're working on something mm -hmm. that's under heat, there's a, there's a, there's a huge amount of shared knowledge. Um, and I wanted to mention that, I mean, it's a, it sort of gives the impression of being a very elite place, New Lab does. Um, and you mentioned maybe 10 to 15% of people get in, but it's, it's an amazingly okay. unthreatening environment, I've, I find it to be. Um, and I think people, most people would agree here. Right? And I've been thinking about why that is. And I think that it's because there are so many people doing so many different things that if you're used to kind of being a hot shot or you know, your friends and family are sort of admire you because you've thought of some concept, whether it's technology or business. When you come here, you, you, you look around and suddenly there's something over there you never would have thought of, something over there. And you become aware of all the really smart and or motivated people that are doing something completely different than you um, and maybe better. And everybody, there's a certain kind of modesty that in my experience that, that the members have. And that modesty, um, just by being aware of all the people that know things that you don't about things that you now see, actually, this is pretty amazing. And I had no idea. That kind of modesty uh, makes for a, a much more relaxed environment, I think. Yeah. There aren't the prima donnas that I, that I mentioned would be in a place that's very elite like this. Um, so I think that's an important thing for people who are thinking about what's it like to work here. Um, mm -hmm. It's actually very casual. And, um, and then, you know, the, it's, you know, any organization ultimately reflects, I think, um, the founders are with people that are, that, are, that are still in overall in charge. And New Lab's founders, um, you know, Scott Cohen and David Belt, um, they're just great people, honest, sincere. Um, and that just, is, it just runs down through the, through the New Lab uh, organization for the people that, that they hire. And then the people that, that Scott and David hire, the, the people that they then hire. And so the culture here is just really great. Um, it's really a great environment in, in that way. I would say for a startup also, um, if you're very new, then you don't necessarily know that even if you have one employee, you have to get, you know, unemployment insurance or whatever. I mean, how do you go about applying for some of these government grants? Um, I didn't even know about all these government grants for a long time. It's kind of, uh, here in New Lab, uh, any opportunity that comes up that might be relevant to you, you're going to hear about it. And they do, um, New Lab does, um, uh, there, there are, there are uh, clinics on uh, legal and that's free legal help. And it's not that they're going to you know, fund your filing of your patent from start to finish, but what, what you can do is you can, they'll put you in touch with 
I'm saying you because I'm talking about your lab to people who are watching. I'll get you introduced to the basics. And so you at least know what you're up against. And you can maybe you can write the patent by yourself. Uh, you'll, you'll find out if, in fact, that you could with the kind of work you're doing, things like that. And they'll connect you with their network of patent lawyers and IP lawyers. Um, so it's, a, it's a, everything you might need uh, as a startup. Um, New Lab can provide support with everything. It's... No, thank you for that, Pietro. And, you know, uh, the, when we think about building community, uh, certainly the community that we set out to cultivate, one where collaboration can thrive, and really thinking about how difficult it is uh, oftentimes to bring uh, this kind of uh, commercialized, really uh, emerging technologies. Um, and so the resources that we are providing uh, to the community are in the spirit of that, just thinking with you, okay, you know, what could your company benefit from? And then going ahead and making those introductions. But really, it's it's those 800 members that we continue to highlight in the previous presentations that make this, um, who go out of their way uh, to support their fellow members oftentimes. And um, on that note, I think um, I'd love to hear, uh, we have a couple of minutes left, but where is Pliant Energy going? What What is the future for you? So I, I, I probably said most of that in my in my introduction, um, but we have two main branches as the, which might lead to us dividing into two companies if it becomes necessary. We have the the renewable energy uh, ir irrigation filtration uh, pump uh, for developing regions of the world, and then we have the the military robot that the Navy is funding. That is, you know, they have the Navy see they have special operations in mind for it. Um, there's, um, there's that side of it, and we hope to um, we hope to commercialize both the very cool military robots that have a big civilian application. Mm -hmm. By the way, we don't see ourselves as a defense contractor. We're doing R and D to develop technology for the defense business, but there's a big civilian spinoff. Um, the fact the robot can go over mud means that it's going to be very good at, at sewer inspection, for example. So it can swim mm -hmm. and crawl and glide. And it's not a very glamorous role for it, but I think it could end up being, um, being a very important one. Also, you know, coral reef restoration, seagrass uh, restoration. Um, it doesn't have spinning blades, so it doesn't get tangled uh, in weeds and seagrass and mangroves and so forth. So, you know, we, we've done years of R&D, basic research really, uh, and then applied research. And we, with this robot, um, the new robot C-Ray, we're going to, we look at, looking to have a commercialized vehicle within two or three years. That is amazing. Again, just to hear kind of the breadth of potential applications for the technology that you have developed through research uh, and R&D all these years. And uh, with that, then uh, we want to bring the this session to a close. And I just want to invite everyone again who's joined us today um, if you're interested in membership, to go ahead on our website, newtlab.com slash membership um, to submit your application. If you're working in clean tech um, and to see the value of being part of the Newlab community, uh, we can certainly help you. You'll get to meet people like Pietro who joins us today. Um, and also if there are other questions that you have, you're curious uh, to learn more about membership aspects that perhaps we didn't cover today, you can also reach us at membership at newtlab.com. Thank you so much, Pietro, for your time. And uh, we will be connecting again uh, soon. And thank you again also to everyone who joined us this today. You're very welcome. Nice to see you, Jim.